who is strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Let us bow our heads for one prayer. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for taking us on our way so we can worship you in the house of the Lord. Lord, please, we just thank you for another day, another blessing, but just life, Lord. Lord, please let us give us the give us the strength that way we may worship you with every ounce of our body. Lord, we just I just want to thank you. Thank you for giving us safe travel. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen.
what we want. Uh, we like to, um, if there are any visitors, please stand.
as he has been a blessing unto us. Amen. And so it is today. If I can get, uh, let me get two, two, let me get four ladies to come and they're going to receive our gifts this morning. Can I have four ladies real quick across the front aisle to receive our gifts? Amen. This morning, for those of you who are unfamiliar, we only give one time a year, but we give in four distinct ways in this moment of worship in our giving. First, we give, amen, in the brown baskets that are going on the outside. Those brown baskets are for our general tithe and public offering. Amen. Then our silver tray is for our benevolent. We want to be a blessing to those who are less fortunate than we are. And then our black basket is for our capital campaign debt liquidation of our life center, the family life center in the back. Amen. I want you to give as God has gifted and given unto you. For again, you can't be God's giving. Is that right? No matter how you try. For those of you who give electronically, listen, you can search the word on your app phone or in your Google store. Amen. And you can search in the app the words Giblify and you can download if you have not you can search the word Friendship Hamilton and then you can be a blessing electronically the way God has blessed you for those of you at home and who are going to give amen by the mail again it is P.O. Box 546 Hamilton, Georgia 31811 again it's P.O. Box 546 Hamilton, Georgia 31811 we want to give as God has given unto us. And don't, please don't forget homecoming. It's coming up the second Sunday in the month of August. Amen. You know what you've been asked to give. I pray that you would consider giving your $150 in the support of that endeavor. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, repeat after me. Say, Lord, this is my time. Come on, say it like you mean to say, Lord, this is my time. I give to you my faith. I give not out of formality. I give in obedience to your word. Bless it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatever you are, come give, drop your gifts. There's no systematic way of giving. Well, the Lord has blessed you. Just come and drop your gift unto our God.
together. Amen. How great he is. Our God, he is a great God. And he's indeed worthy of all of our praise. How many of y'all know prayer still works? How many of y'all know prayer is in order? I believe here at the Friendship Church, prayer may not change things, but prayer pleases God. And when I please God, then God will change some things. Let me see the elevation of your hands. How many of y'all need the Lord to change some things? I need the Lord to walk around in my space, to walk around in my life, to walk around in my situation and circumstances. And here it is. If I learn to tell God all about my troubles, he may not come when I want him to, but I believe he's always right on time. Amen. Whatever well, you are, I'm not sure what you are in need of, but I'm, I, I dare you to just try God, even when you cannot trace God. Because if you try him, then you can't trace him. And I simply believe God will do for you what you had not do for yourself. Amen. We're praying for our sick and our shedding. We're praying for those who are behind the bars of prison. We're praying for those who are out of the ark of safety. We're praying for those that don't have a roof over their head, don't have food to eat, that don't have clothes to wear. We're praying that God will just keep them when they cannot keep themselves. How many of y'all know he is a keeper, right? Y'all don't know he keeps you sometimes even when you want to let go. And for that reason, I simply tell the Lord thank you. Amen. When you do it, he'll come to see about you. When you do it, he'll come to hold you in the hollow of his own hand. Master 
forgive us our forgive us our daily bread, Lord. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who sin and trespass against us. Our Father, lead us not into temptation, but my Heavenly Father, we pray that you would deliver us from all things we call sin, harm, and evil. Our Father, we come again this morning to simply say thank you. Our Father, we pause here now to say thank you because again, it was you that allowed us to lay down last night. God, it was you that allowed us to toss and turn all night long. But God, we thank you because early this morning, God, you woke us up and started us on our way. And for that, we say thank you. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity you granted to us that we might again come to the house of worship one more time. And so, God, as we are present in this place, God, we thank you because we realize that if it had not been for you on our side, God, we would have been somewhere very dead sleeping in our grave. But, God, we thank you that you allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. And so, God, as we entered in this place, God, help us to lift up the name of your son, Jesus. For, God, you declared in your word, and I am happy lifted up. God, you said, I'll draw all men unto me. And so, God, we come this morning with an attitude of gratitude. We, we come just to say thank you. Our Father, we have had 10,000 times. We could not say thank you enough. But, God, we thank you for food to eat. We thank you for clothes to wear. We thank you for a roof over our head. God, we, we don't take your grace for granted. God, we thank you for the activities of our lives. God, we thank you for being clothed and in our right mind. And so, God, as we come today, God, I pray that you would just have mercy on everyone. Have mercy to them according to your will. Have mercy according to your way. Have mercy according to your word. God, somebody standing around the altar, they need you for one thing. God, somebody sitting in the pew needs you for another. But God, I don't have to send you nowhere. I can just say, have an all the way. And God, you'll move in this place from the cross and all the way to the back door. You'll move in this place. God, that some sinner, man, woman, boy, or girl may come back. What must I do to be saved? God, have your way today. Have your way in our worship. Have your way in our praise. Have your way in our thanksgiving. Let everything that has prayer praise your name. God, we thank you today. God, we thank you, sister, for who you are. God, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for allowing your son Jesus to die on an old cross, be buried in a tomb. But God, we thank you that early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And so, God, we want to hear a word from on high. We want to hear from him this morning. And so, God, I pray now that you would give us a word that will be beneficial for our soul. But I'm asking, oh God, that you would hide the core your day beneath the cross, but hide me in the cross, that these my people would see none of me. But God, hide me, that they may see all of you. For God is your worthy this morning of our praise. And so God, I pray now that you'll bless us now as we enter into your worship. I pray now, God, that whatever we do in this place, God, I pray it not be done in vain. And as we go out, God, I pray that you'll watch over us not only today, but the remaining of the week. And God, as we come back, we can again repeat the process by telling you thank you. Bless our time together. Bless our coming in. And when we leave, I pray that you're blessed. I'm going out. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. And every heart that agrees said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
because of who God is, I come to give God some praise. Are y'all living here with me? That's why he says, if you're going to make the noise, he says, listen, you got to serve him, not just any kind of way, but the text says, serve him with what gladness. Come before his presence with what sing the posture of my worship, the posture of my praise uh, ought to be with my head lifted up. And I tell everybody in here, so what? You don't have all you want, but how many of y'all thank God you got exactly what you need for having any help in here? Don't you dare get it twisted. There's somebody somewhere that want to trade places with you. There's somebody lying on their bed of affliction that want to be in church. There's some behind the bars, the prison that want to be in church. But am I talking to just two or three of y'all in this place today that say they were called of what God has done for me. I'm going to serve God not just any kind of way but how many of y'all going to serve God with gladness? How many of y'all are going to serve God before his presence with singing? Why? Because God has been good. Has he been good to you? Has he been better to you than you've been to your I got to be right because the text says, but I know who he is. Verse 3 says, I know that he is the Lord. The Lord he is, God. How do I know? Because it is he that made me. Y'all do know he made us out in the likeness of his image. The text says, we are not of ourselves, but here it is, we are what his people and what the sheep of his pasture. What the psalmist suggests in verses 1, 2, and 3 is that the prayer of every believer ought to be pointed unto God. I want to suggest to you today that when your prayers are pointed to God, I'm going to tell you what God will do is take your prayer, take your worship, take your position, and what he'll do, he'll make it smell good to his nostril. And I wonder today how many of y'all got up with the Lord on your mind? How many of y'all got up with Jesus at your forefront? How many of y'all got up this morning telling the Lord, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do, which is to give your name of some praises. And so it is, the psalmist said, listen, baby, if you're going to enter in for worship, if you're going to enter in for praise, here's what the psalmist suggests to the believer in here. He said, don't you come just any kind of way. The psalmist said, listen, if you're going to come through the old gates on Sunday morning, knowing that he is God, knowing that you're coming to serve him, knowing that you are going to make a joyful noise, verse 4 says you ought to come in a certain way. Do I have any help in here? And that's why I want to suggest to you today, I don't care what you got going on in your life. When you come through those doors, something ought to change. I don't care what's going on at home. When you enter into those doors, something ought to change. When, when you come into the house of the Lord on Sunday morning, can I suggest to you today, beloved brothers and sisters, there ought to be a difference in your life. And I, and I wonder today, is there anybody glad you got up this morning? Is there anybody glad you put on your clothes? Is there anybody glad you got in your car? Is there anybody glad you drove to this church? Is there anybody glad? When you got to this house, you came into those doors. How many of y'all glad that you can worship God? Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah. And so verse 4 says, uh -huh. saying, listen, if you're going to worship him, he says, you can't do it any kind of way. Can I get to the text? Here it is. Verse 4 says, you got to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Right. And let's shout back with me in. See, much as we are going home today, the reason I came in to worship him is first of all, my worship ought to change the atmosphere in my surroundings. Are y'all in here with me? Every now and then, I don't feel like worshiping him. Every now and then, I don't feel like going to church. Every now and then, I don't feel like studying my Bible. But, but something happens when I begin to worship God. Are y'all in here with me? When, when I begin to worship God, watch this, then the things that are around me start to change. And I want to suggest to you today that if you want some things to change in your life, can I tell you what you ought to do? You ought to worship God. Do I have any help in here? Maybe they're too quiet on your own because they don't know the God that you know. But if you know the God that I know and if the God that we both know has been good to you, 
Can I tell you, you ought to go on and worship him. I don't know how you worship. I don't know what you say. You may clap your hands. You may open up your mouth. You may say something to the Lord. You may say hallelujah. But I want to tell you, when you worship God, your atmosphere ought to change. Because the more I call him, y'all do know the better I feel. The better I feel, y'all do know the more I call him. How do I know the text is? Simply this, they can smell into, into his gate with thanksgiving. Into his what? Courts with praise. Here's what I want you to know, beloved. Here it is. Watch this. Where I stand makes the difference in my life. Are y'all in here with me? In other words, I can be on the outside and be one way, but then when I come on the inside, I can be something altogether different. Why? Because something on the inside makes me love like God said love. That's why it said near into his gates. Why? With what? Thanksgiving and into his what? Courts with what? Praise. When I looked at the top, the psalmist here is verse 4, there's a difference between the gates and the courts. Are y'all in here with me? In other words, he calls us to the gates and then into the courts of the Lord. The gates are the entry point to his house. But I don't want to just be in the entry point. But I, mean, I just don't want to be at the ticket booth. The text says, enter into his gates, but then it says, into his what? Court. Watch this. I want to be in the place where Jesus is. And I thought I had some people in the place today that say, then I don't want to be on the outside, but I want to be on the inside. Are y'all in here with me? Watch this. Because on the outside, everybody's looking at you. On the outside, everybody's talking about you. But how many of y'all know on the inside, everybody's worshiping God? And I wonder today if there's anybody glad that you ain't got to look toward the hill from which coming your help because your help don't come from the hill when you worship him. How many of y'all know I can look beyond the hill and see God? That's why I want to be in the presence of who he is. Not just at the gates. They sell tickets at the gate. But I want to be in his presence. I want to be at the court. Sometimes I don't want to be on the top side of the 50 yard line. I, I want to be right there at the bottom by right the court side. Are y'all in here with me? I want to be in the presence of my God. Now I know what's called, watch this, when your atmosphere is changed and when your surroundings are changing, what happens is now you have the visibility of your praise. That's why I tell us all the time here at 101 Friendship Street, watch this, what does God look at when he sees you in worship? Are y'all in here with me? The visibility of your praying is not for you, but your visibility is for somebody else. Are y'all in here with me? That's why don't you worry about who ain't saying amen, who ain't clapping their hands, who ain't shouting hallelujah. You want to have a visible praise on the altar of your heart. Do I have any help in here? That your visible praise may please God. I got to stop right there. And I wonder, is there anybody in here got a visible praise in your heart today? Is there anybody got a visible praise on your life today? Here it is. You ought to clap them hands. You ought to wave your hand. You ought to say something. Why? Because of my visible praise. When praises go up, y'all do no blessings. My question is, how many of y'all need a blessing? How many of y'all praying for your children and your children need a blessing? How many of y'all got some grandchildren that need a blessing? How many of y'all praying that God will bless some grandchildren and some of y'all even got some great-grandchildren? How many of y'all bless them? Asking the Lord to bless them. Here it is. If you want the Lord to bless them, can I tell you what you ought to do? You ought to bless him with a visible praise. Let everything that has praise the name of God. Not, not only is my praise visible, but here it is. I ought to have some sound in my praise. In other words, there will be some meaning to what I say. In other words, when God hears you, the question I got to you is that when you enter into his courts with thanksgiving or into the gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, can God hear you? Do I have a witness in here? I tell us all the time, don't you be louder out there than you are in here. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Because if you don't want to praise God, can I just throw this out there for free? God got some rocks on the outside that's waiting to trade places with you. But I gotta have my 15 of y'all in here that say, Dave, I ain't gonna let no 
rock trade places with me. Why? Because the God that I serve, he's been good to me. I you know he's been good to you. He let me lay down last night. Wasn't he good to me? He let me slumber between night and death. Wasn't he good to me? Early this morning, it wasn't because of what I did, but it was because of who he is. He touched me with a finger of his love. I wish the old church was in here. That old church was sick, and he woke me up and started me on my way. Can I tell you, for that, I'm going to have a sound in my praise. Not only do I praise him, because it changed the atmosphere in my surroundings. But watch this. I came in this place to worship simply because what it do, does is it produces the confidence I need in my situation. How do I know? Because look what the text says. The text says, be what? Thankful unto him. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my children. I'm grateful for my family. But here it is. I'm grateful for my child, my church. But here it is. My flint is not to them. My thanks is to him. And I wonder today if I have anybody in here who understand that, yeah, you got something to tell God thank you for. Is there anybody in here thank God that you got something you can tell God thank you for? Is there anybody that can say, hey, I look back over my life and I see from which God has brought me from my soul says. Is there anybody over here got anything to say thank you for? Is there anybody on my right got anything to say thank you for? How much y'all on my left? I know y'all from Texas and Florida and everywhere else, but do anybody over here got anything to say thank you for? How many y'all over here? Is there anybody over here got anything to say thank you for? When you thank God for the little things, how many y'all know he'll open up the windows to the big things and he'll pour you out blessings that you have room in her, not even to what receive it? Here it is, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. I'm still in verse 4. Verse 4 says, but now be thankful unto him. My thanks to God produces my confidence in my situation. It means, watch this, through the eyes of my faith, we can look beyond our present. And we can simply tell God, thank you for my future. Are y'all in here with me? In other words, being grateful in my present day situation gives me the open door to my future endeavors. Can I suggest to you today, don't you dare look at somebody and become jealous of what they have. Are y'all in here with me? Don't you dare look at somebody and become envious of what they have. Are y'all in here with me? Because what they have, you might can't use it. What they got might not be meant for you. What they have may not be in your umbrella. But watch this. If you go on and keep telling God, thank you. How many of y'all know one of these old days? I wish I had some witnesses in here. One of these old days, whatever you need, you'll find it at your address. Now and then, I get off, I get home, and I, get, I see the mailman coming. He's on my street, but he ain't in my address. He's on my street at somebody else's home and house, delivering somebody else's mail. Are y'all in here with me? But if I just stand by my mailbox, I wish I had some people standing by the mailbox with me. If I just stand by my mailbox, sooner or later, how many of y'all know it's going to work in my favor? Sooner or later, what he did for them, how many of y'all know he got to do it for me? He's going to come in about me. That's why it gives me confidence that if I tell God thank you, God will, y'all do know God will, don't you? God will do for me those things that I cannot do for myself. The confidence in my praise by me saying thanks to God simply says I thank God for, first of all, the provisions in my life. Nothing that I have belongs to me. Nothing that I am belongs to me. Here it is. Everything I am is simply because of the gift and grace of God. When I know God taught me. Where I am, God brought me. Where I'm ahead, God is going to take me. Can I have somebody in here over 65 that would testify it was nobody but God. Are y'all in here with me? That's why you got 
confidence in your praise. Why? Because you got something to tell God, thank you for. He's provided for you. That's why I'm grateful today that God is still in the providing business. I'm grateful today that I'm not all I ought to be. But I thank God today, every moment of my life, I'm not what I used to be. But watch this, because the provisions of my God, how many of y'all know in due time, not before time, but in due time, I shall come forth as pure coal. Here it is. He provides for me. Not only does he provide for me, here it is. The reason I have confidence unto him in something, unto my God, or in my situation. It's not just because of the provisions, but I got confidence simply because of the love that keeps me surrounded. I got to park there and ask the question, is there anybody who ever thought about throwing in the towel? Is there anybody in here who ever thought about giving up? Is there anybody in here who ever thought about walking away? Can I suggest to you, you ought to tell God, thank you, because when you almost let go, how many of y'all know that's when God came in and picked you up? And I ought to have some people in here, even you, Sister Mason, over 94 years old, you can testify here. Not only day did he pick me up, how many of y'all know he turned me around? And how many of y'all know he didn't just turn me around? But the love that kept me surrounded is he placed my feet yeah. on a solid ground. That's why I tell y'all, don't worry about my praise, because you were there when I met the Lord Jesus. You don't know my story, how God did for me what I couldn't do for myself. You, you don't know what God has brought me from, through, over, and out. But here it is, when I think of the goodness of God, I wish I had some people in here, let me say it again. When I think of the goodness of God and all he's done for me, my soul says, huh? Not only watch this, the verse 4 suggests to me that if I come in to worship him, verse 4 says, listen, it'll change the atmosphere in your surroundings. Not only will it change the atmosphere in your surroundings, but watch this, number 2, what it will do is by you telling God, thank you, it will produce the confidence you need in your situation. But I got to go to my seat today. I spent too long with you now. But third, I want to suggest to you that when I came in here to worship, what my worship does is thirdly, it eliminates the favor of God in my salvation. Can I suggest today you didn't save yourselves? Can I tell this today? It was God who saved your soul. I know you say, well, I came down the aisle. I gave the preacher my hand. I gave God my heart. But can I suggest to you, ever before you came down the aisle, let me tell you what happened. Something on the inside pricked your heart. Are y'all in here with me? And you come saying, what must I do to be saved? Here it is. It illuminates the favor of God in my salvation. You do know you're saved, don't you? You do know you're sanctified, don't you? Don't you let nobody tell you you ain't saved. If you know that God did for you what you can do for yourself, you want to be willing to give the Lord a big God. Bless you. What did he do today? He came. He lived. He hung. He bled. He died. He was buried. He got up. He went away. He's coming back. And I wonder today, is there anybody waiting on the Lord to come back? Is there anybody waiting on God to come back from where he was? Watch this. One of these old days, I don't know where, I don't know when, but he's coming for me. A church without spots and a wrinkle. What do you mean, day it illuminates the favor of God in my salvation? Because you're saved. Here it is, everybody can't bless his name. That's why every now and then, there's all that look at you funny. There's all that look at you crazy. Because of your worship and praise unto God. But when God has saved you from death, hell, and the grave, you got something on the inside that you need to get on the outside. And verse 4 said, not just enter into his gates with thanksgiving, but not just enter into his court with praise. Not just be thankful unto him, but verse 4 said, bless his name. I want to tell you there's something about his name. Do y'all thank God for his name? How many of y'all thank God for the name of Jesus Christ? Here it is, his name makes ways 
time no ways. His name turns my midnights into middays. His name, I can call it in the morning. I can call it in the noon day of the hour. I can call it late at night. How many of y'all know that when you call his name, if there's anybody here know that at the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue got to confess. Why must he tell me that? in my salvation. Because the last four words of the text says, and bless his name. And you know, I'm going to see today to tell everybody in here, don't you dare stop blessing the name of Jesus. Don't you stop blessing the name of God. Why? Because the reason why I bless his name is simply because what he did was he redeemed me into his righteousness. I'm not righteous because of who I am. I'm righteous simply because of who God is. Are y'all in here with me? He redeemed me. In other words, he brought me back into the right relationship with God. And I stopped by this morning to tell everybody in the building that your job is to bless the name of Jesus Christ. Are y'all in here with me? That's why when I think about the blessings that come from the name of Jesus, not only does God redeem me into his righteousness, but I stopped by to tell you secondly, God will bestow favor on my life. And I wanted to ask somebody the question, is there anybody in this place that want God to open up the windows and pour you out some blessings that you have a room enough, not even, to receive it? Have I got the help in him? I stood for a long time this morning, and I stand to tell everybody, you ought to come into the house of God to worship him. You ought to come and to this place to give God some praise. Is there anybody in this place that got anything to praise God all about? Have I got the hip in him? Is there anybody in the friendship church got anything to tell God thank you for? Have I got the hip in him? Is there anybody in the friendship church that can testify God? been good to you. Have I got any help in him? Despite my missiles, despite of my challenges, God has been good to me. Have I got any help in him? I close my sermon by telling everybody the reason why I came in here to worship him. Because of my just a verse number one, because of not just verse number two, because of not just verse three and four, but I came into the house this morning to worship my God, because there's a verse number five, have I got the hip in him, first time since the reason I worship him is because the Lord is good, and y'all make sense, the reason why I worship God. Is because the Lord is good. And y'all still ain't caught on. The reason why I worship God is because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and is true to do it to all generations. I thank you, friendship, for letting me shout back. And I shout back to tell everybody there ought to be a praise in your heart of somebody on the hand a praise in your lips of somebody on the hand a worship in your spirit is there anybody in this place that thank God I got something to worship God for is there anybody in this house that can look back over your life and see how good God has been to you and you can cry out Lord I just want to thank is there anybody in this place got anything to tell God thank you for? Is there anybody in the friendship church got anything to tell God thank you for? Well, if you don't have anything to tell God thank you for, let me give you a nugget and I'm going to my seat. You ought to tell God thank you because over 2,024 years ago, I heard a voice coming under the altar 
say, Father, if you prepare me about it, I'll go down. I'll redeem man of his sin. Can I tell you what happened? The Bible says he wrapped himself in itself. He pulled itself out of his son. He came down through 42 generations. Stepped down in Bethlehem, what you did. Born of a 14 year old girl. Have I got any help in him? At the age of 12 years old, I heard Jesus say in the temple, I got to be about my father's business. He lived. Have I got any help in him? He fed the hungry and he clothed the naked. He gave water to the thirsty, but it wasn't Friday evening. Have I got any help in him? I came to worship, not because of what the psalmist had to say. I came to worship because of one Friday evening. Can I tell you all about my Friday? One Friday evening. Can I tell you what happened? They marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. One Friday evening. They pierced him in his side. They hung him upon a cross. Can I tell you what happened? Blood came streaming down. I'm going to help him him. But I'm so glad I can worship my God. Not because they put him on a cross. But I worship my God simply because uh, he died on that cross. I got to leave y'all now. Is there anybody in this place? I uh, thank God he died. Is there anybody in this house? I uh, know God died. He died to heaven was satisfied. He died from the sixth to the ninth hour. He died. Then I heard the soldiers say, Surely have I got the help in him? Surely. Of this Muslim, the Son of God, he died. They took him off of that cross. They laid him in Joseph of Arimathea's new tomb. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. And can I tell you my reason for worshiping my God? It's not because he died on Friday. It's not because he was buried on Saturday. But I got any help in him. Yeah. Early. Sunday morning, I worship him because he got up. Anybody mad he got up? I'm not with some power. I'm not with a portion of power. I'm not with a percentage of power. But he got up with all power in his hand. If y'all would do me one last favor. Now, bitch, all oh, good morning. Can you holler back at me? Say. Say yeah, say yeah, can y'all say yeah? He loved me, he loved me, yes sir, he loved me. to see family members, and I'm glad we see family members. We didn't come in here to see us as on our post of duty. We didn't come to look at the preacher, but I tell y'all why I came in here. I came to worship God. If you worship him, in spirit and in truth, how many of y'all know he may not come when you want him? Well, maybe some of y'all might not need him. But I need the Lord. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put something in the bank. So when I need a withdrawal, I don't have to use my overdraft protection. I wish I had a one witness in here. That if you put something in there, how many of y'all know when you need it, you can get something out of there? Anybody glad you got a God you can worship? See, Buddha is still dead. Muhammad is still dead. Confucius is still dead. But the God that I serve is not dead. He's alive and free. And the trick is, he will be that way forevermore. Standing all over the building, the invitation is extended. And the door to God's house is now open. Jesus 
Christ is, you ought to come while you have a chance. For yesterday is gone, and tomorrow might not be mine. But the Bible said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If that's you when you come, give your head is bowed, your eye is closed. Come by letter, come by Christian experience. Or you can come as a candidate for water baptism and that's you today. Will you come? 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 Will you come?
celebrations that they thank God for that. As always, thank God for the mirror on the percussion. Y'all give him a hand of celebration. Amen. And then, as always, when Mark shows up, he knows his place in the choir. Y'all give Mark a hand of celebration for hanging out with us on the base. Thank God for April in the sound booth today. Again, to all of you, again, may God bless you and may God keep you. And again, may heaven continue to smile uh, upon you and give you peace. I think that is it for us. What am I missing? One thing, yeah, Lord. We have a birthday today. Uh, two things. Missing two things. Let's get an announcement first. Oh, I'm sorry. One, 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 one. Solomon Road Church for their revival. So that's this Tuesday. So please, those of you who can and will, please go and hang out with them on the 25th at 7 o'clock. And then Miss Joyce has a Miss Joyce said. Is there another birthday? Who? Who birthday? Who? And Rita. That's right. I saw you a little minute ago. Miss Rita and Miss Joyce, y'all wave your hands. Hang out with us. Amen. Thank God. But yeah. Come on, let's sing to them real quickly. Amen. You want to highlight them real quickly? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Come on, give them a hand celebration. Thank y'all. Thank you. Bless y'all. Amen. Marsha, where you at, Marsha? They want. We'll get that Okay. All right. Don't see me when you get through, Marsha. Amen. We'll get the benediction. Thank you. The Leaf Feather want to give us a generous donation. Ain't, ain't nobody clapping but me. Amen. Amen. What do y'all want to say anything to the church? There. Anybody want to speak on behalf of the family? Y'all yeah, yeah, have to see one second, I promise you don't go. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reverend LaCoya Day. It is certainly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for First Lady Amelia and all of our family, matriarch of our family, Gloria Maddox. Raise your hand. I'm Patriarch of the Arch Maddox. And with all of the Lee family, we have um, family of Winston and Emma Lee. Uh, I am a descendant, a granddaughter, but like a daughter. And they had 12 children. And I'm going to ask these 12 and their children to stand. We will start with the Gloria Maddox, Arch Maddox family. Would you stand? These are all a part of the Lee. Plan. There were twelve. Um, and the children of hers, um, Lisa Maddox and Bernard, and of course uh, Mejia. Uh, now, will the family of the next would be different on? No, I'm sorry. Loretta is next. <laughs> Loretta Jackson. Manchester. Yes. And then next would be a uh, Deprimathon. We call him. He is also from Tyler, Texas. And I believe the baby of the group, Angela, we call her Tiny. Yes. And her husband, Deacon Harry Stewart. And they have the seven of children. I have the seven from heaven. And will they stand? The children of uh, their baby daughter, Angel, and husband, Jeff. Wonderful times, and our oldest um, brother, Sidlin, of Chicago, Illinois, his grandson, Tony, and daughters. I miss my own daughters, uh, daughter, and grandchildren. Um, again, we have the Eva Kate family, and um, my daughter. With you, Dr. Jim Oliver, my granddaughter, Kayla, and Aggie, and uh, Uncle uh, Godfrey, and if you know him, his name is 
Pop. Uh, they call him Pop here. Uh, his daughter, Valerie, oh. and children, and husband from Tallahassee, Florida.